sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm here, I'm here. All right, Pros are not accounted for. Can sorry, start, sir. Man? Yes, yes, sir. Excellent. Yes, sir. Sorry. Well, welcome to all of you to another edition of BeerAmerica.tv. I'm Paul Leone. John Pickerton. And David Little. I, I am very excited about this episode because uh, this was actually my, my first taste of dogfish head beer. Really? This beer was? This beer was the, 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 the oh, yes, oh, I did. Cool. And that Excellent. would be cool. the uh, Raison d'Etre, Reason to Be. Yep, yep. Uh, Raison dogfish head. And it was before uh, I knew Sam and uh, the whole dogfish thing. Dogfish thing? Well, the dogfish thing because they brew beers a lot different than I think a lot of people. Oh, uh, absolutely. You know, they, absolutely. Uh, I they think it's take, appropriate to say dogfish head thing because it's kind of a phenomenon. I mean, it, really. It really is. And, and we're going to do a lot more dogfish uh, beers. And as a matter of fact, if you go to our site, um, you'll see an extreme brewing piece that I did uh, when I was doing a show for PBS. Oh, that's right. You did that thing with Sam. Yeah, yeah with yeah, Sam. Yeah. And you know Sam. We all know Sam. Oh, you're the guy that yeah. did that thing with Sam. So look yeah. for that piece, uh, which is going to be on the uh, on the road section, which will be in the tab right above here. You see that right up there? It's on the road. Yeah, all Actually, those pieces are the, the, the separate channel on this website that, that we do when we travel, like the Five Seasons Brewery in Atlanta, other things like that. If you click on that, those are kind of the travel section videos that separated from the blog videos that we're doing right, on. right now. So. And that's, of course, where we really shine. Yes, exactly, on the road. Where we'd on rather be, although we enjoy doing this, being on the road uh, amongst the peeps, as the white guys uh. would say. My peeps. my peeps. I like to be among my peeps. Uh, so anyway, uh, not going there. I, I not going even. <laughs> uh, the raison d'etre is actually yeah, my first taste of dogfish head beer, and and when you read the label, uh, when it says uh, a deep mahogany ale brewed with Belgian beet sugars, green raisins, and a sense of purpose. And what alarmed me when I first the read sense this of purpose. was uh, the green raisins, and I thought, my God. It tastes like raisin bran or something. Nothing like it. I mean, farthest. And I, I like, to, I like to give like my neighbors who are beer drinkers that sort of thing. I said you got to try this beer because to me, and you guys might disagree, it always had sort of a wine characteristic to it. I guess sort of a fine, I don't know, sweetness to it that I really enjoy. Uh, but I'm a big fan of this beer. I mean, really, this is this beer is definitely in my top five of all time. I mean, definitely. Well, you know, I think that, that, yes, it does have green raisins, but, and, and I'm not a big raisin fan. But I don't get not, any raisins. I guess what I know is raisins, right. eating raisins, right. I don't get that. Well, you get the beauty of the, uh, yeah. I think the sweetness of the sugar, mm -hmm. sure. which they use the, sure. you know, in the fermentation, but. We've all had this beer. Correct? Oh, yeah. This beer. yeah. I've mm -hmm. had it. I've had it. But a the, lot. But the beet sugars, I mean, down the back I get of the throat, the, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's, uh. No? No, well, I'm just going to... I'm just going to say you're color, wrong in the sugars. Really? Look at that color. <laughs> well, well, the, the whole you're thing the expert. The, I'm not as far well, as tasting. But I get a sweetness, I guess. Am I not interpreting that as... I'm going to guess that the sweetness is going to come from the malt. I, oh, yeah, the I don't, beet sugar is going to be 100% fermented malt. It's, yeah, that should be it, pretty okay. much pure dextrose. When, but when I hear as the average beer person sugar, I think sweetness, I think malt. I don't... Absolutely, yeah. I mean, right. th that's kind of one of those things where in the in the beer world we're kind of like uh, bombarded by this vernacular that often doesn't really entirely apply. I mean, we, we've there's been a long history of uh, uh, kind of confusing vernacular that's been based in marketing. Okay. Now, that's not. I'm not saying that about this beer particularly, mm -hmm. but what I'm saying is that sometimes we can misinterpret what we're seeing here. I think that there is some raisiny flavor. To me, I, I do get some raisin characteristics. Um, the beet sugar, as David pointed out, that should be pretty much pure dextrose. Okay. Um, that should just basically add to the alcohol content, really. Really? Okay. It should be pretty much a neutral characteristic. Uh, the raisin character, I think, plays in as a little bit of that wine characteristic. Um, oh, and, it's, and it does have a, a good, I mean, wine characteristic, I think, is a really good... Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, and but I. But I'm not taking the, the sense of purpose. The color. <laughs> it's a nice color. I don't know. I get that more in the aroma. I think it's a sense of purpose. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think everything no, they brew that, but... has a, a sense of purpose, and, and that goes back to the whole dogfish head thing. As I was saying, 
you, you go with a dogfish beer, and there's a lot of great brewers out there, but dogfish beers are just different. I mean, they strive well, to be different. You know, like they said, their motto is off-centered ales for off-centered off people. Off-centered people, yeah. I think I, a lot of what I think about dogfish beers and, and their approach to brewing is sure. because we can. Right. I mean, you know, they, they just Absolutely. look at a whole bunch of just unique ingredients, put them together, yeah. and... You know, I, let's see what happens. I was watching the Discovery Channel thing and Sam was on it and he said that if they run it over and they could grab it and brew with it and if it tastes okay, they do it. Exactly. You know, I mean, it pretty exactly. much sums yeah. it up. <laughs> but this is... That's what I love about Sam. Yeah. Is it's like, you know, he's out there, he's just going to do it. You know. And, this, I, and the, there's been an enormous amount of success that's oh come yeah, over absolutely. that. Absolutely. Well, I think, I think one of the beauties about, about well, dogfish beers, I think sure. in general, but this one specific... I mean, I, I think of this as a food beer. I think there's a lot yeah. of foods. I think this goes with, yeah. you know, there's some, some beauty thing. If I had a really rich steak that would be really good sure. with this. Actually, I wrote I mean, a few some, down here, for, right on the website. And that's the beauty, too, if you go to the Dogfish website. He actually says the style of glass you should drink it out of, the type of foods you should eat it with. And he's got, you know, and, which we had thought, too. You hit it right on the head. Steak. A uh, duck game, a which I thought was interesting too, is blue cheese. Blue cheese has such a pungent oh. flavor, well, and I, this smooth, would smooth it out nicely. It, I think this would go, and that kind of shocked me a little bit that you know, my, my beers would go with blue cheese. I, I could see this one. Going. Well, aggressive beers go with yeah. aggressive cheese. Yeah. I mean, you know, if a blue cheese with this, I think part of that maybe a little bit of that alcohol note that's mm -hmm. in this. There's a that kind of wine quality. It's a little bit higher in alcohol. Eight percent. Those are the things that I like to, to sure. bring those those big cheeses with because I think this will stand up to them. I, I, I think just to take that point a, a step further, it's not necessarily that aggressive beers, like you could have a, a super hoppy beer that might not necessarily no, no, go with an aggressive yeah. beer. Right. But uh, this is a beer that is, I don't want to say it's devoid of hop character, but it's not a hoppy beer. Right, right. And I think that's why it pairs so well with food because that there's, I think there's a limited selection of foods that go really well with, with hops. Really ah, hoppy flavors. Right. right. Yeah, yes. And then that, that's okay. I mean, there, there's, there's a time and a place. And I love hoppy beers, so don't get me wrong. Right, right. Uh, but this goes probably well with cheese, or uh, I'm sorry, with, with, with a wider variety of foods because mm -hmm. of those hops. Yeah. And we talked about before how some of, the, some of the hoppy beers don't go very well with seafood. There's a weird reaction there with, the, right. with some of the, the seafood flavors. Um, it tends to overpower a lot of more sure. subtle characteristics. And I think this is, this is a good example of a beer that can yeah. go with a lot of things because it doesn't overwhelm necessarily. Right. And because it has a lot of those nice kind of complementary flavors, yeah. there's some there's malt there, you know. I mean, for the same reasons that a lot of wines would go, um, with some of the foods we're talking about, yeah. sure. this one certainly would. Well, well this it's, it's, it's complex. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of layers, I think, in this beer. So. Well, this one is definitely in my top five. I mean, I I've been a fan of this mm -hmm. beer forever and ever and ever. And uh, here at the distillery where we're doing this, they actually have it on tap. So if I they do. Every now and then. Every they now rotate and then. it in and out. Wow, they they put specials there. We should have gotten draft samples. Yeah. It's, it's really a wonderful beer. and that can uh, be accomplished. And one of my favorites, uh, you know, but I think you should try... You should try it if you see it on your shelf. And I think he's got Absolutely. he's got more national distribution than he used to. I mean, every year yes. he seems to be growing a little yeah. bit more. And again, as we say, if you can get it in Savannah, Georgia, <laughs> you can get it <laughs> almost anywhere. anywhere. Yeah, right, as you know, you know. So, uh, so that's it. Dogfish Head Raison d'être, which stands for reason to be. Reason to be. And there's a Raison d'extra, by the way, which is like uh, used to be. Uh, I don't think they're brewing that anymore. They're not. I do have a bottle of it that maybe I'll break out. That, that, it's like 20% alcohol. It's and, race and on deck. When are you going on steroids. vacation? Do you need someone to house it for you? Really? You like? Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. That's a, you've had that. It's a big. It's a great beer. It's a great big beer. I remember the first time I had it. It's a great it. big gigantic had, beer. Well, I thought I was having Raison Dextra, mm -hmm. and I looked at the label later and said it was raised on Raison Dextra. Dextra. I didn't even. I mean, I didn't. Couldn't tell that it was a big, big beer. It was just really, really smooth. Great Very good. Well, I'll save it for us. And we'll do it another time. All righty then. So, gentlemen, cheers. Uh, that's, uh, that's actually now, you guys heard that too, so. Yeah, I'll, hey, <laughs> why not? Share with friends, right? So, uh, look us up on cheers. Facebook. Become a fan of BeerAmerica.tv. Also, uh, become a fan of Moon River Brewing Company. You can do that as well. That's right. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, and also, you're on Twitter as well. I'm on Twitter, yeah. McGruffus. McGruffus. M-A-C-G-R-U-F-F-U-S. Go ahead. McGruffus. Give him a follow as well. So cheers to Sam Calagione for brewing another great beer. And the Thanks, folks Sam. at Dogfish Head. And uh, cheers guys, to you guys. You so much. Great, Delicious. Great to uh, have this one with you guys. Cheers. Cheers. cheers.